Welcome to Art with Diane Mahaffey. Today's beginner watercolor lesson is the training painting lesson number two. This is a snow scene and you will learn some new techniques like using table salt to make snowflakes. Also, you will learn to paint winter trees and you'll learn how to make cast shadows in the snow. Finally, you will see how to get spatial perspective with trees going back into the distance. It is always a good idea to paint two paintings of each training painting. That way, while the sky is drying on the first painting, you can start on the second one and do that sky. But then the sky is dry on the first one and so on. This will help you not to wait on drying before continuing. Another advantage to this method, you'll have two paintings of each and you'll get twice as good, twice as fast, and you'll have twice as many paintings. Okay, folks, let's get started. Today, we are going to paint a snow scene. And I've got several types of snow scenes for you to see. We're going to be doing one like this, which is a basic beginner watercolor snow scene lesson. And it teaches all those techniques that I was talking about. And then you can uh, add fences if you would like. Um, you, can, you can see how the salt makes the snowflakes there. And I also wanted you to see this snow scene. You don't always have to have snowflakes coming down in a snow scene. And you can also add a cabin, and I use more browns here than I normally do for a snow scene. So I just wanted you to see that you have options, but we're going to do the beginner um, lesson training painting. You may wonder what we need for this lesson. Some of the supplies that's needed, well, these are the supplies that's needed for this lesson. We need a praying watercolor set or something comparable, a one inch br flat brush for watercolor, a number 10 round brush for watercolor, a nine by 12 inch piece of watercolor paper or something close, water jug with water, paper towel, ruler, pencil and eraser, table salt, and the desire to learn, one of the most important elements. All right, let's get started with our sketch. You get a pencil, a ruler. Hannah's going to paint right along with me. I'm going to draw a border. This kind of helps the paper to lay down, but it, and it helps it not to buckle and roll so much, which is no big deal to me. Um, some people take their paper down around the edges, and I do that when I go outside to paint, so I don't have to compete with the wind, but, um, and I did that when I was starting out, but I took a workshop one time from uh, B. Sisson, and she was all about leaving this border to stay dry, and that way your paper um, stays flatter. And also, you can compare your whites with the white edge of the paper. All right, after you do that, the first thing you're going to do is draw uh, a little horizontal line, but let it have a little bit of movement, and it can have some slope if you want it to. And that's pretty much all you need to draw for this. Do not draw your trees or anything like that. All right, we're going to... Uh, since we're going to do this one, we're going to prime our paper. I'm going to show you how to do the salt technique. So pick up your largest brush, and it'll be a brush that holds a lot of water. And I'm, notice I'm gently scraping it on the side of my water container. And just start filling up the sky area with two layers of water. That's how you prime your paper. Keep it off the edges the border if you can. It'll just give you a little bit more um, success. Alright, right now I'm putting one layer on. 
All right, keep it off the land. Okay. Now I'm gonna look across the surface to make sure it didn't, oh, I missed a spot there because it's not shining. You can always tell where you put the water because of the shine. All right, now I'm gonna put the second layer. That's the layer that actually floats on the surface and it enables it to dry a little slower so you have time to work your colors in. All right, I'm going down the paper. And always scrape your brush on the side. I just do it once when I'm priming something. But that way, you're not dripping water all across the table on the way to your painting. All right, I'm double checking it to make sure everything's shiny. All right, it is. So now I'm ready to start putting uh, a wet on wet, or it's also called a wash. I'm going to get blue first. Now this is going to be a snow seam with snowflakes, and I'm and when I touch the water, notice how it explodes with movement. Now you do want to get it blue enough, uh, a, at least a mid value of blue, so that your snowflakes will show up from the contrast. And I'm saving a little bit of my whites, but I don't want to save too many whites because we won't see the snowflakes. All right. Right down here at the edge, I've got a little bit uh, excess amount of water, so I'll just pat my brush on the paper towel, and it'll suck out the moisture, and then therefore I can come in here and dab that. All right, that's enough blue, but I'm going to add a little bit of red, too. And you could add some brown. A little bit of red. Just kind of to warm up that sky, and it actually will make a darker value. Don't get it brilliant. All right. Now, while it's still wet... It is time to put some salt on. All right, I'm going to wash up my brush, scrape it, and I'll just lay it right here. All right, how much salt is the thing? I'm going to put about that much in my hand, and I hope you can see that, and I'm going to pinch and sprinkle. Pinch, sprinkle. Don't put too much because it won't work. And if you put wet salt on wet paint, it won't work. You have to put dry salt on wet paint. And the paint has to be wet. If you paint slowly and your sky is dry when you sprinkle it on, you won't get anything. All right, and then it takes it about 15 minutes to work. And look how much salt I still have left over. All right, I still have a lot of salt left over. So I'm going to lay this on the paper towel. Hannah might want to use it, or she might just want to get some out of there. All right, immediately I'm starting to get some little black dots. All right, while this is taking an effect, I want to show you a, um, a painting I did of a red fox. And look at the snowflake. The fox is playing in the snow. He looks like he's sniffing it and it's tickling his nose. But um, you don't have to just have it in a landscape. You can put it in an animal portrait. So uh, it's a nice technique to know how to use. All right. Um, yeah, I can see it's beginning to get a little bit white. And you don't want to start painting the next part of your paper until... That is dry. So while we're waiting, I'm going to lay it aside and go back so you can t look closer at these snowflakes. Sometimes they're tiny, like you see here. 
Sometimes they're huge. That's like a blizzard. Now this one's dry and I haven't done any more detail down here, but I'm getting ready to. And then sometimes the salt is very soft and subtle. All right, so you never know what you're gonna get. That's part of the fun of it. All right, and Hannah has her salt on hers too. All right, so I'm gonna switch to my dry one. And now, the next thing I'm going to do is teach you how to make winter trees, deciduous trees. Every time we do a training painting to, painting to start with, we do trees, palm trees, and um, now deciduous winter trees, and then we'll be doing fir trees then later. All right, so I'm going to wet, I'm using the number 10 round. Number 10 round. I'm going to get brown. My brown's right beside of black out of my prime set. And I'm going to start right here. This tree's going to be closest to me. Now notice how I'm starting at the bottom, going up. Keep getting some pigment, but make sure that brush is wet too. One mistake that beginners make is their brush might not be wet and they're digging into the paint and all they're getting is a bunch of sticky pigment on there and it's not going to flow. You want it to flow like ink. All right, I think I'll add another branch through here. Now notice how I'm letting it run out of the painting. That makes for a good composition. That allows the viewer to know there's more to this than what's right here in the in the boundaries of the painting. All right, so while the brown's wet, jump right over here to your black. We're going to have a light source. The light's going to be coming this way. So that would make the right side of my tree darker. And notice that I'm coming right up the right side. It's making it a little more contrasty, but you have to do that while the brown is wet and make it a little bit bigger down here. All right, and just let that softly bleed across. All right, so I'm gonna wash that black out of my brush. Now that tree is close up and it's bigger. The next tree is going to be farther away. So, I'm going to get brown. Make sure your brush is wet. Get brown on your brush. So, instead of putting the next tree here, I'll back up just a little bit and make it just a little bit smaller. Things appear to get smaller as they go back in the distance. All right, just travel down this road and you can take a right turn or a left turn. It doesn't matter. Travel right back down the same road. And now I'll go to the left. Travel back down the same road. Don't just stick branches on because that makes them look really unnatural. All right. I'm still going right back down the same road and it makes my value a little darker. Now this tree is in front of this one, so if I wanted to extend a few little branches from this tree, I could over to the side. Okay, now I'm going to add a few twigs, just a few. All right, I'm ready for the black. That's right at the end of the prank set. Stay on the right side, be consistent. The right side is shadowed. Because the light's coming in from the left. All right, widen that tree just a little bit. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, I'm going to wash out my brush because I know I've got black on there. Scrape it a few times. I'm not priming, so just go, scrape it a few times. Now this tr next tree is going to be even farther away. 
than this one or this one. All right, so I'm getting some brown. I'll do this one right. Let's see here. Okay. Need a little more pigment. Don't want these trees to be see-through, ghosty. All right, use the point. All right, pull out branches. Try not to make all your trees look just alike. They all are have different shapes. And they all go out of, in this painting, they all go out of the picture plane. All right, I've got black on my brush now. Notice I didn't wash out my brush, and I went right from brown on my brush to black. That brown is not going to hurt that black at all. That's because I was going darker, but if you go lighter, you would certainly wash out your brush. All right, so now I've got three trees that go back in the distance. They're getting smaller. The bottom of them are getting higher on the picture plane. Wash that black. I'm going to put one more close-up tree and then we'll do some in the distance. All right, I need brown. Now, this one's going to be very small. Now, notice how these are spaced almost the same. So I'm going to put one, the last one way over here because you don't want to have a, a um, rhythmic pattern that looks unnatural to nature. All right, this will be way back on the picture plane. Way back there. All right, I'm going to go to the left this time. I've been going to the right. Just to do something different. Make them leave the picture plane. That's so hard sometimes for beginners. They don't want to let anything leave the picture plane, and they want to put everything really small in the very center of their paper and waste all that space. But you learn as you go, and these are lots of things. There's a lot of things to learn in this, these training paintings that can help you later on. All right, so I broke up that repetitious pattern. Now I'm going to do some trees, way, some more deciduous trees way in the distance. While I've got this blackish-brownish color on, it doesn't really matter. I'll put some way back here. And they don't need much detail at all. Oh, they're very far away. Okay. All right. And see that one shorter than this. Some might just look like little sticks. Make them break that pencil line, though. Um, I'll put a few over here. Don't make them all be shaped like Y's. Maybe a few. A few, and then some could have three. Some just look like sticks. Look how far back that one looks. Okay. Group some of them together in a mass. It just leaves. I'm going to put one that's uh, right here. That's a little closer looking than some of the other ones. But it's still a distant tree. All right, our foreground we, it are our four big deciduous trees. Our background, besides the sky, are the trees way back in the distance. All right, so now that I have this on here, I need to paint some shadows in the snow. So let's talk about the shadows in the snow. And then we'll do cast shadows, too. I'm going to rinse out my brush. And let's look what I'm talking about. These are called cast shadows. Cast shadows of the trees. These, this is called snow shadows. If you don't put snow shadows in, it'll look like a white concrete parking lot. It'll just look flat. All right, so with the other ones... I was talking about. Oh, this is the one I did before I switched them out. Look at all those snowflakes. But it's still damp, and I would never want to start 
putting my trees on there while it's damp. So wait till it's bone dry, but you can already see that was the one I demonstrated just a few minutes ago. All right, look at these cast shadows. You can tell the light is coming in from this direction. All right, so we're ready. Let's do the cast shadows first. The tree cast shadows. I'm rinsing out my brush and I'm gonna scrape it on the side so that it's wet but it's not dripping. Now I'm gonna not get any paint from the paint set. I'm gonna touch it to the bottom of my tree and drag it across the snow and let it run out of the picture. Maybe you can let another limb run out. Notice it's a much lighter value than the real thing. All right, same way here. Touch the bottom, drag that pigment across, let it run out of the picture. Don't add too many details to a cast shadow. All right, touch it here. See already we're getting more depth. Hit and miss, skip as you coming around. That one probably shouldn't go out of the picture plane because there's so much space here. But this one, definitely let it go out of the picture plane. All right, so I have my cast shadows of my trees. Now I need some snow shadows. Rinse that brown out of your brush. And on the snow shadows, you have to have the most self-control not to dig into that paint. Better to air it with on the side of it being too light because you can always come back and darken it than to make it too dark to start with. So I want to use purple. With snow, you can use almost any value. You can use browns, very light that is. You can use blues, you can use purples, but I'm going to use purple. All right, right beside the blue, I've got some purple on here. All right, notice I'm being very gentle, gentle with it. And notice that you get a little curvature going, like the land. I need a little more there. Make sure your brush is wet. Have self-control. I know it's fun, but you don't want purple eyebrows all over your snow. And I've seen students do that. But you need these snow shadows. A little bit more water. This is probably one of the lightest values of purple you can do. Hope you've made your value scales because that helps you a lot in learning to control. It only has a little bit of pigment. And you can't mess up with the snow shadows, but don't overdo it. Keep them soft. And there you have finished your beginner snow scene training painting. I hope you learned lots of new things. Learned how to do salt and make that salt work. You just have to be patient. Don't add too much. Dry salt on wet paint. And stay tuned for the next training painting, which will be a mountain scene. Thank you for watching.